Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating um, an element, and this element is a div just here. And the element is going to follow us as we scroll down the page. So you see I've got some background content here, and my scroll bar um, shows that I can scroll quite a way down the page. Uh, and we're also going to make it so we can click on the element and hide it as well. So let's go ahead and start to scroll down the page and see what happens. Uh, you can see that the element is following us all the way down, so it's staying in uh, the exact position uh, that it's in. Now, there's a, it's a tiny bit jumpy, uh, and we are not really going to look at ways we, we, that we can fix this, uh, but we're going to be dealing with the initial concept of actually scrolling an element down the page. Uh, it shouldn't really matter too much with things like images, uh, if you were to place images inside this div. Um, so, you know, you could just create your div as an image, uh, essentially, or have an image scroll down the page uh, on its own. So we're just going to be taking a look at creating this, uh, just how you can see it working, uh, which isn't bad at all. It's quite a neat effect and quite useful if you want something uh, on your page that, you know, for example, this could be a menu, uh, it could be absolutely anything. Uh, but I've created the additional functionality where we can click it and actually hide it. So uh, as we enter the page, or as we enter the page, uh, you see it slightly fades in. Uh, but when we click it, we can actually hide it as well. Uh, so we can hide this, uh, you know, anywhere down the page as well. It has the same functionality. So it's quite useful for creating, for example, adverts that would follow a user down the page, or such as something like information uh, that the user might need to know, or you might want to let your users know uh, as they scroll down the page. So let's go ahead and go over to our text editor and start to write this out. Okay, so inside of our text editor on our index page, we're going to have to actually create the div uh, that we want, uh, you know, to to be displayed. Uh, and obviously, in uh, just a minute ago, you would have seen the uh, the uh, paragraphs that I have here. This element will follow you all the way down the page, and you can hide it by clicking on it. So all I've done is I've gone ahead and created a div with the ID of follow. This is important because we need to use this div ID to reference it, uh, select it in jQuery. Uh, and my page content is here, which is uh, a long uh, line of content uh, that you've seen. So at the moment on our page, if we were to go over to our browser, you can see it looks like this. We've got these two paragraphs here contained within the div. However, what we want to go and do is actually style this so it uh, adheres to the edge of the page uh, and also give it some sort of other, other CSS properties that will mean it, um, it is in the correct position, essentially. So we can go ahead and style this using the uh, ID follow. So inside style.css, which I've included on my page just here, the uh, link rail to the style sheet, uh, I'm going to go ahead and type follow. And inside here, we're going to need to give it some properties. So there's quite a bit to think about here if you're not too good at CSS, but most of the um, the parameters are self-explanatory. Uh, the first one is position absolute, and all this means is that we can we can place it at an absolute position on our page, uh, which is extremely important because we want it to overlap other page content. Uh, so we want the position set to absolute. And because we have the position set to absolute, we can then go ahead and specify how many pixels from the left hand side of the page it is, and also how many pixels it is from the top. And I've chosen 10 and 10. Now in ext.js, which I've also included on the page here, obviously as well as jQuery, we can actually take this um, value a bit later on. So we wouldn't ever have to go ahead and modify ext.js if we wanted it, say, 20 from the top and 20 from the left. Uh, we could change this in uh, style.css and not have to worry about changing our jQuery code. So we're going to make it more dynamic as well in the way that it picks up the position of the current element. Uh, so we'll just give it some basic properties like a height. Uh, we'll give this 300 pixels and also a width as well. Uh, we can just give this a width of, say, 180 pixels. Uh, we also want to go ahead and just give it a background color, which is uh, you know just so we can see it on the page uh, and it hasn't just got a plain white background. Uh, and also we want to go ahead and give it a border, so that's a border of one pixel, a solid border, and the colour is 40, 40, 40, which I've chosen, which is a sort of mid uh, grey colour. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and give it some padding, 
uh, so we have our text shown correctly. Now the CSS that I've just written here uh, will enable it to be viewed in a different way. Uh, at the moment you can just see it's just text here on a page essentially, uh, but when we refresh you can see that we've now got uh, it styled correctly. It's in a position absolute which means it is uh, overlapping our content. 